you might have glimpsed him in the studio just now, the one million dollar man, or rather a collection of artificial organs, synthetic blood and robotic limbs, all of which can be fitted onto or into the human body. Rex, as he's called, has been put together by an expert team for a forthcoming Channel 4 documentary, How to Build a Bionic Man, in an effort to show just how far prosthetic science has advanced. Our science editor, Tom Clark, explains more. Not only can he speak... I feel exposed. ...talk to Rex, and he can listen. He can see through a chip wired into his retina, damage him, and he would bleed artificial blood that carries oxygen from his nano-engineered lungs pumped around his body by an electronic heart. Strictly speaking, he's not a robot. His parts aren't designed to work together, but each one either is or soon could be part of a living human being. Most of us would agree that a human being is greater than the sum of its parts, but what this bionic man so clearly illustrates is just how many parts science can now create. Ah, this is amazing. Rex is the embodiment of a journey made by Swiss researcher Berthold Meyer to discover exactly what science can offer people like him who rely on bionic parts. Mr Meyer was born without a left hand. In a documentary about his quest, Meyer discovers the latest bionic limbs, superior even to his own. <laughs> this is just awesome. May I shake your hand? Please. That is absolutely incredible. Despite a personal interest in limbs, Mr Meyer is just as impressed by internal bionic organs under development. My, one of my personal favourites is the artificial blood that runs through these tubings. But this is not a, a real blood, this is nanoparticles. Mm. And I thought that was absolutely science fiction, so I thought that was very, very impressive. Also the fact that they are very close to an implantable artificial kidney that will actually be able to replace a failing kidney without the necessity of a kidney transplant. Mm. Now think of the great benefits some technology like that would bring. Come with me if you want to live. But along with the benefits come some important questions. Should bionic parts aspire to visions of the future and give us superhuman power? Should we allow, for example, people to replace electively their healthy limbs with artificial ones that are more capable and yeah. powerful? Yeah. Should we allow that? If yes, what are the consequences? If no, why not? These questions should be asked now and not when the technology becomes available. A fully bionic human is still a thing of science fiction, but any of these parts could be appearing in a body near you sooner than you think. Tom Clark. Well, we're joined now by Beltov Meyer, who you saw in Tom's report, and, of course, Rex. Hello, John. Not just now, Rex. Let's keep you quiet for a moment. Let me talk now to, to, to Bertolt Meyer. Bertolt Meyer, you have yourself a prosthetic arm. Um, and and I'm, I'm wondering, it's interesting, it, it does look like a hand, and yet it's very clearly a mechanical hand. It is. Uh, could it look more human? Would it be helpful if it looked more human? Well, it could look more human if you put a flesh-coloured plastic glove over it. And some people prefer to do that. Um, I don't. It takes away functionality from the hand because it poses more resistance, makes it slower. And also it sends out this message that you're trying to cover something, that you're trying to hide something, and it always looks awkward. So in a sense you feel perfectly comfortable with an undressed Rex. Let's just... just uh, Rex, could you set your old heart beating, old boy? Go for it. Gosh, that, that's rather interesting. It's uh, very loud, too. But that surely, in a sense, also has been the beauty of the Paralympics, that, that we could see uh, the prosthetics in absolutely all their mechanical glory, pistons, stanchions, whatever they were. I agree that there can be some aesthetic elements to prostheses, especially if you do not try to make them look real, because you always fail if you try to do that. And I think one of the examples that we see here... Rex, the... stop your heart, for goodness sake. <laughs> it's, it's very Carry noisy, on. I know. Yeah. The face, for example. We put on the face to also demonstrate what cosmesis can do today. It's your face, which is somewhat eerie. Oh, I've 
I find it very, very awkward. I had a very hard time I mean, with once, it. I mean, one, oh. one's company, three's a crowd. I mean, you're there too. <laughs> yes. um, but seriously, you're a psychologist and you kind of study difference. I do. Um, do you detect the difference between those who seek to look as human as possible and those who want simply functionality? And there must be a difference. There must be different kinds of people who want different kinds of things. Absolutely. First of all, it's quite a bit of a cultural difference. Uh, individuals who live more in, in Eastern cultures uh, of, and also in Asia do prefer the cosmetic look because there, disability is still more of a societal stigma. And the less it is a societal stigma, the more people become accepting of showcasing kind of that technology. Right, but then you get this thing. It would be possible to make this, I believe, probably ten times stronger than it is, or ten times stronger than a human arm. So what are the moral and ethical parameters of how far you ought to go? We don't have these parameters yet. That is the big problem. We might be able to come up with bionic technology that's more capable than a healthy human body soon. Who should get it? Should we allow this? These are open questions to which I don't have the answer, but I think it's important that we discuss these questions now before the technology becomes available. That's fascinating. And this guy, incidentally, has a pancreas, which is interesting. It has. It has an artificial pancreas that can give off insulin into the artificial blood that flows through the tubing. With tremendous uh, potential for diabetics, for example. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of potential for overcoming many diseases through technology, not only for diabetics, but also individuals, for individuals with a failing kidney, for example, also for individuals with a failing heart. Well, alas, that's where we're going to have to end it. But Bertolt, well, Rex, indeed, thank you very, very much for um, coming in.